Hello, this is a quick review about how to factor um, trinomials, like the two special cases. Our first special case that we have is this first problem here, x squared minus 49. And first thing I want you to notice is that there is a minus sign, and that x squared is a perfect square, and 49 is a perfect square. And so this right here would fall under our difference of perfect squares category. The easiest thing, or these are really easy, because when you factor them, you really just have two sets of parentheses, and then um, within each set of parentheses, you have one has a plus sign and the other has a minus sign. It doesn't matter which one has plus, which one has minus. And then at this point, you just now have to figure out, well, what is the square root of x squared? Well, to figure that out, what times itself is going to give you x squared? And the answer to that question is x. So there's an x in the first part of each parentheses. And then you think about the same thing with 49. What's the square root of 49? Or what number times itself is going to give you 49? And in both cases, or either way you look at it, the answer is 7. So the answer to this problem is x plus 7 and x minus 7. The next example we have is the same concept. Um, it's a little bit different, though, because it does have this 9x squared here. But if we think about the number 9, well, 9 is still a perfect square. And so the way we're going to set this up again is we have our two parentheses. And within each set of parentheses, well, within one set, we have a plus sign. And within the other set, we have a minus sign. And so we're looking at our 9x squared here, and we're trying to figure out, well, what's the square root of that? Or what times itself is going to give us 9x squared? We'll start with the 9. What times itself gives us 9? The answer to that is 3. So that means that within um, each of these, so I'm having some trouble with the cursor. We'll just write this out. Um, that within each of these we're going to have a 3 because 3 times 3 is going to give us 9 and then to get the x squared we need an x in each of them and then we've got to look at negative 4 or 4 and what times itself gives us 4 and the answer to that is 2 so our parentheses in this case would be 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2 then we move on to our next two problems, and these two are a little bit different. Um, the first thing you should notice about them is that they have three terms um, instead of just two like the first two had. And this middle term here is not a um, perfect square. But this one, because if we look at it, they um, we have x squared plus 8x plus 16. And if you'll notice this one, if you take the square root of x squared and the square root of 16, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 is 4, and if you multiply that times 2, you get 8. So this one here falls into the perfect square trinomial. Um, when we do those, we have one set of parentheses, we have a squared sign, whatever this sign is right here is going to go in our parentheses. And then all we have to figure out is what's the square root of this term and what's the square root of this term. Well, the square root of x squared is x because x times x gives us x squared. And the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 gives us 16. So the answer to this one would be x plus 4 squared. All right, then we have our last one here. Um, again, if we think about our square roots, our square root of 25 is 5. Our square root of x is x. And if you multiply 5 and x times 2, you get 10x. And that's why we know this one is a perfect square trinomial. So again, I'm going to have one set of parentheses with a squared outside. Whatever this sign is will be in my parentheses. And then I need to figure out the square root of x squared, which is x, and the square root of 25, which is 5. So the answer to this one is x minus 5 squared. So hope that helps. Have a good day.